we planted four rows with 10 plants in each row. And they have just absolutely overtaken everything. That's about the only spot right there that's not covered. This is this is the corn that Payson and Brighton and Bexley planted. And it was far away from the squash at the time. And now you can see that squash has just gone in and taken over. There's some more little jacks in the middle. Lesson learned. This year we planted four rows of, of squash. And I think we're too close because instead of growing out on the ground, they're growing up out of the top, trying to send their runners out. It'll be interesting to see what our harvest brings because right now you can't see anything underneath all of these leaves. But what we can see doesn't seem to be as many pieces of fruit on the ground as we usually see. So maybe we'll cut back to three rows instead of four next year. It's just that dad gets so excited in the spring and wants to plant so much. But I think that might have been a mistake this year. We'll have to see. I'll come back and show you when the frost has hit it and all of these big, huge leaves are shriveled up and we'll see how much squash and pumpkins we have underneath. Look how smoky the skies are from those fires in Washington and Oregon. You can't even see the mountains over there. I'm excited for Payson and Bexley and Brighton to come and pick the corn that they planted themselves off of these few stalks we have here. We planted this version or type of corn down here far away from the other corn up there because last year we planted it close and then we found out that you weren't supposed to do that. and. This corn, which is called peaches and cream, didn't taste good at all compared to the honey and pearl that dad always plants. And it's because they cross-pollinated and it specifically said, we saw afterwards, that you shouldn't do that. So that's why we planted them clear down here and just a little bit and obviously too close to the squash. <laughs> 